So we are proud of our performance. We have been always proud of our performance. ونحافظ على خططنا وعلى فرصنا للنمو لخلق يعني مستقبل مستدام. Imagine standing at the base of a building so tall that clouds form halfway up its side. A structure so massive that a single elevator ride to the top takes longer than your morning commute. Now imagine building that in a desert where the temperature can literally cook an egg on the pavement. Sound impossible? That's exactly what engineers in Saudi Arabia are attempting right now. Deep in the heart of Riyadh, something extraordinary is taking shape. Something that makes every other tall building on earth look like a toy. We're talking about Rise Tower, a 2,000 meter vertical city that would pierce the sky at heights where commercial airplanes cruise. To put that in perspective, you could stack three Empire State Buildings on top of each other and still not reach its summit. The Burj Khalifa, currently the world's tallest building, Rise Tower would make it look like a warm-up exercise. But here's where things get really interesting. This isn't just about building something tall for bragging rights. This is about solving engineering problems that have never been solved before. Problems so complex that the solutions being developed could change how we build cities forever. Let's start with the most obvious question. How do you even begin building something this insane? You can't just start stacking floors and hope for the best. The foundation alone is a feat that borders on the unbelievable. Engineers have to excavate a pit so deep it could swallow a 10-story building. Then they drive thousands of massive steel-reinforced piles deep into the desert bedrock, creating an anchor system that could hold the weight of a small mountain. The concrete platform that sits on top of this, it's one of the largest continuous pours in construction history. Hundreds of thousands of cubic meters of reinforced concrete creating a raft so massive it could cover 20 football fields. Now here's where the real challenge begins. At 2,000 meters high, this building enters a realm where normal physics stops playing nice. Wind becomes your worst enemy. At the summit, wind gusts hit with forces that could generate thousands of tons of pressure. Without intervention, the tower would sway back and forth by several meters. Imagine working on the 600th floor and watching your coffee cup slide across the desk every few minutes. Not exactly ideal for a luxury office space. So how do engineers solve this? They get creative. The tower doesn't rise straight up like a traditional skyscraper. Instead, it tapers and twists as it climbs, creating an aerodynamic profile that makes wind flow around it rather than slam into it. Think of it like a Formula One car versus a brick. Same concept, just applied vertically, but that's only part of the solution. Inside this giant structure, enormous steel pendulums weighing hundreds of tons hang suspended acting as tuned mass dampers. When the building starts to sway one direction, these massive weights swing the opposite way, counteracting the movement. It's like having a gyroscope the size of a bus keeping your building stable. But wait, there's an even bigger problem that most people don't think about. How do you get people up and down a 2,000 meter tower? Traditional elevator cables would snap under their own weight long before reaching those heights. Steel can only support so much, and at these distances, gravity wins. The solution sounds like something from a science fiction movie, magnetic levitation elevators. These aren't your grandfather's lifts. Instead of cables, they use powerful magnets to glide up and down tracks, just like those futuristic maglev trains, except pointed straight up. Even more impressive, they can move horizontally, creating a network of sky lobbies that essentially turn the building into multiple vertical neighborhoods stacked on top of each other. Now let's talk about the brutal reality of building in the Saudi desert. Riyadh doesn't just get hot, it gets apocalyptically hot. Temperatures regularly hit 50 degrees Celsius. That's hot enough to cause serious problems for concrete, which can set too quickly and crack under extreme heat. Engineers have had to get clever, mixing the concrete with chilled water and even liquid nitrogen to keep it cool. Much of the foundation work happens at night when temperatures drop to merely unbearable instead of completely impossible. And then there's the dust. Fine desert sand doesn't just blow around. It infiltrates everything. It coats equipment, clogs machinery, and grinds down moving parts like sandpaper. Every crane, every lift, every piece of equipment has to be sealed against this relentless assault. Cleaning crews work around the clock just to keep surfaces operational. It's a war of attrition against the desert itself. The construction process is mind-boggling in scale. At peak activity, more than 20,000 workers would operate in shifts, working 24 hours a day. Specialized self-climbing cranes would scale the building as it rises, lifting steel sections that weigh as much as several cars. Concrete gets pumped hundreds of meters into the sky through high-pressure lines, while prefabricated steel modules arrive in a constant daily stream. This isn't construction, it's orchestrating controlled chaos on a scale that's hard to comprehend. And let's not forget the practical challenges of actually using this building once it's built. The energy required to power a 678-floor vertical city 
is staggering. Air conditioning alone would consume enough electricity to power thousands of homes. Add in the lifts, lighting, water systems, and everything else, and you're looking at power demands equivalent to a small city. Massive electrical substations are required just to keep the lights on. Here's the uncomfortable truth that critics are quick to point out. This project carries a price tag exceeding $20 billion. That's more than the entire Dubai metro system cost to build, and there's precedent for concern. The Jetta Tower, which would reach only half the height of Rise Tower, has faced delay after delay and remains unfinished years after construction began. Some experts question whether Rise Tower will ever actually be completed or if it's simply an ambitious vision that will remain on drawing boards forever. But here's the fascinating part. Some argue it doesn't matter whether it gets finished. The real purpose of projects like this isn't just to create a building, it's to make a statement, to capture global attention, to show the world that boundaries are meant to be pushed. Saudi Arabia is in the midst of a massive transformation, trying to pivot away from oil dependency toward tourism, business, and innovation. Projects like Rise Tower serve as powerful symbols of that ambition, finished or not. If this tower does get completed, the ripple effects would be enormous. Technologies developed for this project, from the maglev elevator systems to advanced concrete formulations to revolutionary wind damping techniques, would influence skyscraper design worldwide. The tower could transform Riyadh into a major global business hub, attracting companies, residents, and millions of tourists eager to experience what would essentially be a city in the clouds. From the top observation deck, visitors would see across the desert for up to 80 kilometers. They'd look down on airplanes approaching the city's airport. They'd stand at a height where the air is noticeably thinner and the curvature of the earth becomes visible on the horizon. It would be an experience unlike anything else on the planet. This raises a profound question. Should we keep building taller and taller? Or should our resources go toward making cities more livable, sustainable, and equitable? There's no simple answer. What's clear is that projects like Rise Tower push the boundaries of human achievement. They force us to develop new technologies, solve impossible problems, and reimagine what's possible. Whether that justifies the cost and effort is a debate that will continue long after construction cranes stop climbing. One thing is certain. The race to build higher has only just begun. Rise Tower represents the bold, audacious future of architecture. A future where our buildings don't just touch the sky, they pierce straight through it. Whether it becomes reality or remains an ambitious dream, it's already changed the conversation about what humans can achieve when we refuse to accept limits. The question isn't whether we can build it, the question is whether we should, and the answer to that might just define the next era of human construction.